Act now to get on America's... Good morning, America. Breaking news. Two of the president's closest advisors in turmoil. Communications director Hope Hicks resigns after admitting she's told, quote, white lies for the president. And now Jared Kushner under new fire for meeting in the White House with banks that gave his family company millions in new loans. All this as the president's unprecedented public war with his own attorney general escalates to the breaking point. Also breaking right now, show of force. President Putin revealing a powerful new missile to the world. His ominous words about nuclear weapons this morning. Urgent search for a missing mother of two, vanishing from her home while her kids were inside. Police seeing signs of a possible struggle where they found her cell phone in the mysterious social media post before she disappeared. Go big or go! And Do we have any lemons? our huge Lemons for Leukemia event, I don't know. trying to set a record with people all across the world. Will you take the challenge this morning? Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. Good morning, America. Thank you guys for joining us. And welcome back, Robin. A trip home yeah. to see your sister, huh? It was great to be home. It's great to be back here. And thank you for putting the congratulations up in the Jumbo that Trust. As well, that she meant a lot to the family. And we were looking at that. She was just cheesing. I think she's still smiling. Hopefully she's sleeping in after all those years of getting up early to do the morning news. Well, now she's got a singing career. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that she does. The piece was great, though. Thank you. It was. I really appreciate it. We have a lot of news to get to mm -hmm. this morning. We're going to begin with that shakeup and unrest at the White House. The president his closest personal aide, communications director Hope Hicks, has resigned. His son-in-law, Jared Kushner, facing a barrage of bad news. His attorney general, Jeff Sessions, is pushing back against the president's public attacks. We want to begin with Hicks' departure. She joins a long list of Trump loyalists who've come and gone since last January. Our senior White House correspondent, Cecilia Vega, has all the latest. Good morning, Cecilia. Some stunning developments here this morning. George, good morning to you. Right after this news broke, Hicks gave a tearful thank you to her communications team. This comes just 24 hours after that bombshell admission, admission to Congress that she told white lies on behalf of the President of the United States. But the White House says that has nothing to do with the timing of her departure. They say it's just coincidence. Few in the White House inner circle have been closer or more loyal to President Trump. Now, Hope Hicks is a tremendously talented person. She started off with us right from day one. But this morning, the 29-year-old communications director is out, the fourth communications director to resign in the Trump administration. In a statement, Hope Hicks saying, there are no words to adequately express my gratitude to President Trump. The official line from the White House, Hicks has been planning her departure for months, and she's leaving to spend more time with her family. But it comes after that stunning admission to congressional investigators this week that she occasionally tells white lies on behalf of the president. Any collusion? Hicks is a central figure in the Russia investigation, questioned for two days by special counsel Robert Mueller over her involvement in crafting the president's response to that now infamous Trump Tower meeting between Don Jr. and the Russians. And she was at the center of the firestorm over the departure of former staff secretary Rob Porter, ousted amid domestic violence allegations. Porter and Hicks were dating, and she helped develop the administration's defense of him when the news broke. The president praised his outgoing aide in a statement saying, she is as smart and thoughtful as they come. A truly great person, I will miss having her by my side. She became one of the most powerful players in the Trump White House, by the president's side through the campaign. Before that, in Trump Tower as an assistant to the billionaire businessman. A former model, she joined the family working on Ivanka Trump's fashion line. Hicks joining the ranks of a long list of high-profile inner circle aides who left the West Wing in this young administration. And Hicks is, has, isn't leaving for a few weeks, but with her gone, this leaves a stunning lack of confidence in the president's inner circle. Dan Scavino, the social media director here, President Trump's former golf caddy, is the last man standing from the original team of his campaign. Only Jared and Ivanka are the old, after Jared and Ivanka, George, there is literally no one left. No one left. And Cecilia, the communications director, doesn't really capture what Hicks's role inside the White House was. She was basically in every meeting with the president in the campaign inside the White House. She translated him 
to other staffers, others across the government. He would often look her way in meetings to make sure what he was saying was on track. Can anyone fill that role? Well, probably not, to be honest, George. Her office was right outside the president's Oval Office. This was someone among his most trusted confidants outside of his own family. With her gone, there was a real fear that President Trump is becoming increasingly isolated. As you say, she was someone who could keep him calm, kind of rein in some of these fly-by-the-seat-of-his-pants tendencies. With her gone, uh, aides here are worrying what's to come. Okay, so see, thanks very much. Lots more to get to with Robin. That's right, and because President Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, is also facing these scrutiny after that report about his family business. This is the president feuds with his attorney general, Jeff Sessions. Well, last night, Sessions was spotted dining with his top officials in the Justice Department in what's being called a show of solidarity. Our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, the latest on all this. Good morning, Pierre. Robin, good morning. That's right. After months of looking the other way, while the president repeatedly and publicly criticized him, Sessions stood up for himself and his department, making his future uncertain. This morning, there are signs that another high-profile administration official could be forced out. Sources telling ABC News President Trump is outraged at Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who delivered an extraordinary rebuke Wednesday to one of the president's tweets. After the president says Sessions was disgraceful for asking the inspector general, rather than Justice Department attorneys, to investigate claims of potential surveillance abuse, Sessions pushed back, defending his department, saying in a statement, we have initiated the appropriate process that will ensure complaints against this department will be fully and fairly acted upon if necessary. As long as I am the Attorney General, I will continue to discharge my duties with integrity and honor. The key question, whether Mr. Trump was trying to regain control of the Russia probe by trying to force Sessions out. ABC News has recently reported that the special counsel has requested documents about Sessions' near resignation last year after being scolded by the president. Meanwhile, the president's son-in-law facing increasing scrutiny. Overnight, the New York Times reporting that Jared Kushner's real estate firm received $509 million in loans after the leaders of two major Wall Street companies had White House meetings with Kushner. According to the Times, Joshua Harris, who helped found Apollo Global Management. We're finding um, lots of opportunities privately to inject capital. Meeting multiple times with Kushner before his company lent $184 million to Kushner companies to help refinance the mortgage on a Chicago skyscraper. And Citigroup loaning Kushner companies and a partner firm $325 million to finance office buildings in Brooklyn. I am senior advisor to President Donald J. Trump. The meeting and loans involving companies associated with the often seen but rarely heard from Kushner, critics say raises ethical questions about one of the president's top advisors, who also happens to be his son-in-law. Jared Kushner and Donald Trump have flouted all kinds of norms when it comes to outside business interests. With all the recent scrutiny, the president has defended his daughter Ivanka's husband. Well, Jared's done an outstanding job. I think he's been treated very unfairly. A spokesman for Kushner's attorney, Abby Lowell, issued a statement last night to ABC News, making clear his client has completely separated himself from the family business, not pursuing any loans while at the White House, abiding by all ethics rules. A spokesman for Kushner Company says stories like this attempt to make insinuating connections that do not exist to disparage the financial institutions and companies involved. The question for critics this morning is whether Kushner should have met with those companies in the White House in the first place. It is a big question. Okay, Pierre, thanks very much. Let's bring in our chief legal analyst, Dan Amos, for more uh, on all this. Real questions of ethics and appearance for Kushner to be meeting with these bankers when his family companies are seeking loans. But what are the legal implications? Right. We need to separate out the ethical from the legal. Look, their position is he's divested. They weren't talking Kushner-related business. And as a result, there is no... He's only divested from a portion. That, that's true. That's true. And he still is an interest in the, in the larger business. But what they are saying is they weren't talking Kushner business, period. End of discussion with regard to the legal questions. Now, as you heard from the statement there, the insinuation, of course, is that, boy, these, these additional loans sure came forward at interesting times following meetings in the White House. What happened there? So those are questions, not definitively answered. Meantime, we have to talk about the situation with the Attorney General. We have never seen anything like this before. Yeah, look, For much of the last year, the president in a public war with his own Attorney General. This is not normal. Let's be clear. It is not normal 
to have a public spat with the Attorney General over his independence. People are saying, some people are saying, oh, you know, they, people fight. And yes, they do. Not people about fight. investigating but the president. A, 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 they don't fight in public like this very often. And B, they don't fight about the integrity and independence of the Department of Justice. I mean, that's what we're talking about here. And now we do know that Robert Mueller, the special counsel, is looking at this series of tweets, these series of fights between the president and his attorney general. Right. Well, I think he's looking at more just than just with regard to the attorney general. He's looking into tweets and fights with a number of uh, former members of his team, including James Comey and others. But so then it takes on a, a greater significance now. This discussion, this fight between Sessions and Trump now becomes another possible question for Mueller to investigate. Dan Abrams, thanks very much. Robin. And now, George, in that breaking news overseas just moments ago, President, Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, revealed what he's calling, quote, invincible, uh, an invincible missile. It's a new show of force, and our chief foreign correspondent, Terry Moran, has those details for us, the very latest. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Robin. It sure is a show of force. A stunning announcement from Vladimir Putin, an aggressive and defiant declaration of Russia's new nuclear capacity. It was at his State of the Union speech, as he's running for re-election, that Putin declared that Russia has, quote, a brand new weapon, a strategic nuclear missile powered by a nuclear engine. He claimed the new weapon has unlimited range. It can invade any missile defense system, delivering a nuclear attack devastating anywhere in the world. Well, this new missile has been in the works for several years. It was tested successfully twice last year. It's part of Russia's nuclear modernization program. But it was really the way Putin talked about this new missile that was so striking. He was almost angry in this speech, saying, quote, no one listened to us. Listen to us now. Containing Russia has not succeeded. Well, President Trump's also called for greatly strengthening U.S. nuclear weapons. So I guess welcome to the nuclear arms race of the 21st century. Mm. Robin? One way of putting it. All right. Thank you, Terry. News keeps coming this morning, Robin. Back here at home, President Trump shocked lawmakers in a bipartisan meeting on Wednesday, calling out the NRA, calling for comprehensive gun control measures backed by Democrats. The big question now, will those positions stick? Our chief White House correspondent, John Carl, has all the latest. Good morning, John. Good morning, George. President Trump takes pride in being the most pro-NRA president that we have ever had. But he gathered Democrats and Republicans here at the White House and stunned them all by repeatedly taking positions firmly opposed by the NRA. As the television cameras rolled, Donald Trump urged, practically pleaded, lawmakers to impose some of the toughest new restrictions on guns in decades. I see some folks that don't say nice things about me, and that's okay. Because if you turn that into this energy, I'll love you. I don't care. As a candidate, Trump famously promised he would never let the NRA down. And while he once again praised them as true patriots, he repeatedly took positions that put him at odds with both the NRA and Republican leaders in Congress. He pushed the idea of raising the minimum age to buy assault weapons. I would give very serious thought to it. It doesn't make sense that I have to wait till I'm 21 to get a handgun, but I can get this weapon at 18. I don't know. He said one of the NRA's top positions allowing concealed weapons to be carried across state lines was a no-go. That got a fist bump from Senator Dianne Feinstein. I just don't think you're going to get it approved, though, John. You're not going to get concealed okay. carry approved. Amy and Dianne right. and a, a lot of other people, they, people may consider, they're never going to consider it, but people may consider it, but they're not going to consider it in this bill. President also embraced Connecticut Democrat Chris Murphy's call for background checks on all gun purchases, an idea Republicans have voted down again and again. We can't get it done. There's nothing else like that where it works, people want it, and we can't do it. But you uh, have a different president now. Well, <clears throat> listen. I, I, I mean, the, you went through a lot of presidents and you didn't get it done. You have a different president. And I think maybe you have a different attitude, too. I think people want to get it done. Mr. President, it's going to have to be you that brings the Republicans to the table on this because sure. right now the gun lobby would stop it in its tracks. I like that responsibility, Chris. I really do. I think it's time. It's time that a president stepped up.
At the close of the meeting, the president predicted what he called a, quote, amazing result, a big comprehensive measure on guns and school violence, something that has eluded Congress for decades. But to give you an idea, George, of just how big and heavy a lift this would be, Republicans are not excited. Look at what Ben Sass, Republican senator, said after the meeting. He said, we're not ditching any constitutional protections simply because the last person the president talked to today doesn't like them. Yeah, that was some George. tough stuff. Still waiting to hear from the Republican leaders in Congress as well. John Carl, thanks very much. Michael. Thank you, George. And students returning, returned to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School for the first time on Wednesday. They were greeted by therapy dogs and counselors. And in the wake of that school shooting, another major retailer is taking action on gun control. Walmart saying overnight it will stop selling firearms and ammunition to people under 21. That announcement following the one from Dick's Sporting Goods that we had yesterday in our chief Business correspondent Rebecca Jarvis is here with more, and Rebecca, it's a big announcement. This is a big announcement, Michael. Good morning to you. And that's right, retail giant Walmart saying that in light of recent events, they've reviewed their policies and they've decided to make changes as a number of other retailers are cutting ties with the NRA. Overnight, the nation's largest retailer announcing it will raise the minimum age to purchase firearms in its stores to 21 years old. Walmart, which stopped selling the AR-15 rifle nearly three years ago, now the second major company to change gun policy in the wake of the horrific Parkland school shooting. Dick Sporting Goods CEO announced on Good Morning America Wednesday that his company will ban the sale of assault weapons and will no longer sell firearms to anyone under 21 years old. We looked at what happened down in Parkland and uh, we, were, we, we were so disturbed and saddened by what happened. On Twitter, the reactions fiercely divided. Some saying they will stop shopping at the Sporting Goods store while others having the exact opposite reaction. Singer-songwriter Josh Groban responding to the announcement by writing, I suddenly feel like buying a baseball mitt, some tennis strings, and a pair of pole vault sneakers. Since the shooting, more than a dozen businesses have severed ties to the NRA, while others, including FedEx, have resisted social media pressure. The left is now trying to move the conversation to specifically focus on an AR-15, because after all, what have they done with this event? but politicize it. Tech giants Amazon, Apple, and Roku, which let users stream NRA TV, are resisting pressure to pull programming from their platforms. Roku telling ABC News, we do not curate or censor based on viewpoint. We are not promoting or being paid to distribute NRA TV. Shareholders at American Outdoor Brands, Dick Sporting Goods, and Sturm Ruger asked the companies to report on the steps that they're taking to improve gun safety and stop violence. Michael, you can tell there are a lot of different forces at play here, really playing into what these retailers will do next. Absolutely. And Dick's made a big statement yesterday. He said, going to stop the sale of assault-style weapons. But how many of these type of weapons are sold at Dick's or big box stores like Walmart? The bottom line here is not a lot. A small portion of the sales of firearms are being sold at these big box retailers and in fact the majority of those AR-15 rifles are being sold locally or online at small mom and pop independent suppliers Michael all right thank you Rebecca yeah, let's go to Rob right now he's tracking the storm coming east Hey, George, strong dynamics coming together with this system. Yesterday, the southern part of it dropping what, an apparent tornado there in central Alabama. Now look at all the watches and warnings from the northeast all the way back through the mid-south and wind warnings all the way down to Georgia with this developing storm. It goes from inland to coastal overnight tonight. Heavy rain and wind intensifying, even some snow on the back side of this could see gusts over 50 or 60 miles an hour. More on this in the 8 o'clock hour. For now, though, your snowy city is brought to you by CarMax. If you're anything like me, your to-do list just keeps growing. <laughs> it never stops. Which is why the online financing application at CarMax.com is so convenient. Get some of that finance stuff out of the way from wherever you are. At the doctor's office, karate practice, or my favorite, back at the doctor's office. Knowing before you go means more quality time sewing a costume for the school play that is not going to look anything like a frog. Just a little heads up, Mrs. Davis. Uh, yay, kids! Minimal impacts from today's rain showers. We're going up to 55 degrees, so the puddles will be small today, but high impact from the wind tomorrow. The winds will get up to possibly over 55 and maybe upwards 60 miles per hour for a time. Prolonged high winds expected. This is one of the highest wind events uh, that we've had in quite some time. That high wind warning continues throughout the area. The wind eases after Saturday morning.
Up as Ryan Seacrest prepares to take the Oscars red carpet, his response to sexual misconduct allegations, what he's now saying about those claims. And the new alert for anyone using ride-sharing apps about people posing as drivers then attacking, which you need to make sure you check before getting in that car. It's all coming up on GMA. I'll be back. Is this my car? State Farm.